So far in this series, I've shared my favorite methods for processing our photo and getting it ready for more creative editing. In part two, we looked at ways that we can control the light, sculpt the light in our image, and I also explained why dodge and burn just isn't worth using at all and some much better techniques. In this video, I want to show you how we can use layers to not only control color, but also contrast in our photo as well. There's some really useful techniques that you can throw into the mix with your workflow as well. Okay, let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about color. Currently, we've probably got three main colors going on in this photo. We've almost got an orangey yellow of the more dry foliage. We've also got this green of the grass going on here and the moss on the tree trunks. And then we've also got the blue of the sky, the mountain and the reflection. Personally, I'm not a big fan of a three color palette. I much prefer dual tones working with complementary colors. So what I'd like to do first of all is minimize the green and try and enhance the yellows, oranges, and the blues. So before we get into layers, let's just take care of the green. It's probably gonna be easiest with this color tool here. As you know, we have the HSL section here. That stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. So the saturation is obviously how intense a color is in our photo. So I'm just gonna reset that. The normal saturation slider basically talks to every single color simultaneously. HSL, on the other hand, lets us talk into individual colors. So you can see we've got a green slider here. If I boost that up, all of those greens in the grasses just get a little bit more intense and far too much. If we take them down, they get desaturated and head towards gray. I don't want to desaturate them. What I'd prefer to do is just knock the color back a little bit with that saturation slider, but also change the hue so that the color goes from green and matches more in with the yellows. So let's see if we can't achieve that. So rather than being in the saturation section, I'll change to hue, come to the green, and now watch the color green. If I push the slider to the left, it goes to more towards that yellow. If I take it to the right, it becomes more cyan, and that just looks very fake. So we'll bring it back down to the left-hand side. The yellows as well, we can push them to the left, and they start to take on a more orangey look. And that's also starting to affect the greens as well. So overall, I think that's a good change. I will drop the saturation of the greens as well. And let's zoom out to make sure we're happy with how things are looking. And we can do a little toggle of the before and after, before and after, and you can see that all of those greens are being taken care of. We do have some greens on the mountain here, but they're not really being affected. And I think that's because truth be told, they're a lot closer to gray or blue than they are to green. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about those. I'm just gonna leave them as they are. Okay, now I've made that adjustment. What I'd like to do is show you how we can actually start using layers to alter the contrast and alter the color as well. So what layer are we gonna add over the top? Well, we're gonna add an identical layer. We're gonna reintroduce itself over itself. <laughs> now, if that doesn't make sense, let me show you. Let's come over to the layers section and I'm just gonna click on duplicate layer. Currently, we shouldn't see any different because these two layers are identical. So what's the point of doing that? Well, now we have access to blending modes. As I move through these, you'll see that we do actually start to get a different effect with some of these blending modes. The ones that are particularly of interest to me are soft light, overlay and hard light. Now these guys all do a similar thing, but with greater intensity. So I actually like soft light because it's just a little bit more subtle. So if I pop that on there, you can see that we have a much more contrasty image than we had before. So I'm just gonna hide the layer and you see where we came from. And then I'm gonna show the layer and you can see all of that contrast. Now I really like that. But the problem is it's making all of the dark pixels almost pure black. But the great thing with layers is we also have the ability to use masking. And you will recall from the previous episode how luminosity masks work. We're able to remove any tool or effect, or in this case layer, away from pixels based on how bright they are. So we can say, hey, we don't want it to affect the black or dark pixels. So I'm gonna grab this slider and move it over to the right. And now you can see all of the red that represents the mask is being subtracted away from those dark pixels. 
But if that's all I do, we just have a really abrupt transition. That's not what we want. We want to grab this little triangle at the bottom and move it away. And that's going to give us a soft transition, a blend between this box here and then what falls on the left hand side up to this arrow here. So now if I jump out of that, we'll see we've still got a really nice punchy contrasty effect. However, it's not affecting those dark pixels. Let me hide this layer and show again and you'll see we get all that contrast but with minimal effect on those dark pixels. If you've enjoyed this video and the photo editing mini series in general, you'll probably be excited to know that I'm currently working on an in-depth Luminar Neo photo editing course, take you from zero to hero. I'm going to take you from the fundamentals right through to the advanced photo editing techniques. We're gonna cover every single tool inside Luminar Neo and have more examples along the way than you can wave a stick at. It's gonna be awesome. If you would like to find out more about that course and when I'm gonna release it, all of that good stuff, just write course in the comments below. And when I have more information and a link and all of that stuff, I will add that to your comments so you can find out about it. But for now, let's keep pressing on with this edit. We can go a step further and we can actually just use the brush tool to erase it from areas we don't want. So I'm not gonna erase it completely, just 30% taken away. Make sure that I've got a nice big brush that is nice and soft. And I'm just gonna start removing it from the very edge of the frame. Because just as we were talking about in the last video, where your eye goes to areas of maximum contrast, let's keep that maximum contrast in the center of the frame, through here where the mountain and the seat is. Let me go for another pass through here. Now, all of these techniques that I'm showing you, you don't need to apply all of these to every photo. I'm just using this photo to demonstrate these tools to you. So as I hide and I show this layer, there are other ways that we can achieve contrast, like with curves, with smart contrast, but this layered approach is a really nice way to do it as well. Okay, how about controlling the color? Well, let's duplicate this layer that we've just created, and that's gonna intensify the contrast again because we're currently on soft light but let's change this back to normal and let's see if we can't change the color of this and then get it to interact with what's underneath and therefore change the overall look. So easiest way to change the color is if I jump into the develop section here and grab the temperature slider. If I move that to the right, we're gonna warm everything up. We can boost the tint up as well. And if we want to keep things nice and saturated, I can bump the saturation as well. And now if we come back to the blend mode, what we can do in layer properties is make this interact with what's underneath. So as you know, I can flick through these and change to different modes. Overlay, soft light and hard light, again, will introduce those colors and do so with a punchy contrast. But what about if I just switch to color mode? And now I hide the layer and we see what was underneath. And now I show the layer, we can see that we've introduced all of that rich golden effect and that is overlaid over the nice contrasty version of the photo that we created by combining those two previous layers. Now, the nice thing about this particular approach is it's really intuitive to change the overall look based on the opacity slider. So if I grab this and move it all the way to the left, we can see that we've removed all of that color that we just introduced. If I grab it and boost it up, we can see all of the color reintroduced, but we don't have to settle with on or off we can go for a percentage amount. So we might say, you know what? I want about 66% of that effect. We could jump down to the layer that introduced contrast and we can do the same with that as well. We can drop that down. So we've lost the contrast in the center of the photo, bring it up and that contrasts back. And to be honest, I think I like that quite heavy handed on this one. So now if I talk back to the photo before we added the light sculpting and those color and contrast effects, We've got our before, and there we are after the changes from episode two. Well, I really hope this Luminar Neo editing series is helping you to learn some new tips and tricks for your own editing. If it is, do me a massive favor. Press pause on the video. Just leave me a comment in the description below. Let me know what you've liked learning along the way. Just by doing that small act, it gives YouTube's algorithm a positive signal 
that this video is a good one and it helps to spread it to more people and I'd really appreciate that. Okay, I may have saved the best till last, which is my favorite bit, the finishing techniques. I love the finishing techniques because it's really where you get to stamp your photo with your own creative aesthetic. And it's the video that's gonna be popping up like right there once I have recorded and uploaded it. Hope you enjoy that one, guys. Thanks so much for joining me on this one and I'll see you in that video. Bye-bye for now.